Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Greg Tech New Horizons, this is Zyphir, and you're witnessing our newest addition to the base, Xander the Infinite. He is going to provide us non-stop access to Ender Pearls. Whoa, where did you come from? Now, if you weren't able to tune into the live stream, uh, we did do quite a few different useful things that'll help us progress. Um, first on the list was to return back to Phobos, one of Mars' moons. Uh, one of the reasons we needed to come back here was to grab this oxygen equipment, and also the different machines needed to do seismic prospecting. Uh, from there, we decided to leave and take a short little hop over to Mars. Um, we need to go back to Mars to do something that's going to help us out quite a bit. Here, we're going to slap back down our oil drilling plant, uh, except we're not going to be drilling too much oil from Mars. Instead, I decided uh, to set up a little plant here that's completely automated to start gathering us salt water and automatically send it back via our ender tanks that we graciously got from some IV loot bags. That's all I needed to do here. Would have been great to grab some shelite, but we didn't bring compressed chests, so I returned home. Finally, we got the ender tank set up to fully electrolyze and started clearing out some additional landscape. Started expanding the base a little bit and even began working on some PTFE. Which we can see the benefit of right here. Um, this is still currently a work in progress, but in order to get to my next bottleneck, which is the EV precision laser engraver, I needed some additional EV circuits. And in order to make our next EV tier circuit, we are going to need some platinum, leading us to tackle the automation of this. And this is nothing in comparison to palladium, rhodium, all that jazz. So far, I've got the power situation handled, and I've even got our AE channel line brought over here, hooked up to an interface underneath that is requesting a couple different items that we need. I still have some tweaking to do, but let's see what else I can get done. Basically what we have is our platinum metallic powder dust combined with the ore to make platinum concentrate, which will be deposited here. This platinum concentrate then needs to be extracted and sent into an input hatch. The platinum concentrate is then combined with ammonium chloride, which will output diluted sulfuric acid, nitrogen dioxide, palladium enriched ammonia, and its couple items. We then will recycle the nitrogen dioxide into this large chemical reactor, which will auto output its nitric acid. We'll take an item conduit to do this, extract always active. And just for neatness purposes, we'll keep it yellow. I guess we need to make sure this is set to both in and out. Should get its empty cells. Good. All right. I think our first large chemical reactor is done. On to the second. We're going to need some ammonium chloride. That's going to be a bottleneck. So what I've done here to alleviate our bottleneck is started piping in both chlorine and hydrogen to make hydrochloric, which is then sent into a buffer tank and then into another chemical reactor that produces ammonium chloride. That ammonium chloride then gets sent over here via P2P. Those two things combine, make all of their byproducts. Their byproducts get sent into this large chemical reactor, which should in theory recycle our nitric acid and send it all the way back over to our mixer for aqua regia. And last but not least, our final large chemical reactor is just going to take our reprecipitated platinum dust and calcium, 
mix them together, and output some platinum dust, which hopefully gets sent into our system. So without further ado, let's hook up these large chemical reactors one by one. Hello, Mr. Horse. And see if everything works properly. Here's our first recipe, gonna be done in seven seconds. Platinum concentrate gets sent into its respective hatch. Upon looking closer at this recipe, I need to use 18 of this at a time. But if I let two recipes worth process in here, uh, I'm gonna void. So let's go ahead and drop the super tank buffer right here. I'll drop some ME conduit along this way. In hopes that it will deposit our items from our output hatches into our ME system. Since we're using item conduits to extract. I think we'll go ahead and let this run. If I've enabled the fluid detector cover right. Swap out the hatch. And give it a test. Nada. That might be why. 70 second recipe. Shouldn't be too bad. The real question will be, does it output our items? It does not appear to want to output our items. So we'll have to take a look into that. Alright, so we went with a little bit easier of a solution, just attached an item conduit to the rest of our conduit network, switched some hatches around here so that we could run the item conduit underneath and directly into our ME interface. So now in theory, we should be able to start this up. We'll enable this chemical reactor, which should in theory recycle our nitric acid. And this is pretty much a true test to see if the entire process works. It should be recycling its nitric acid, making more aqua regia, and so on and so forth. So let's take a watch and see if it does it right. There's the mixer mixing it up. And we have enough aqua regia to run this again. So finish, dump its platinum concentrate in, into the hatch. Turn that one on and continue its process. All that remains now is to hook up this last chemical reactor, which should just combine our reprecipitated and calcium dust and export some platinum for us. To deal with one of our products that does not get processed in the large chemical reactors, we'll add some capacity cards into this export bus, which will allow us to decide what gets put into this sifter then we'll have the sifter automatically sift down the salts and give us some refined platinum all right i think one of the last steps is to process this refined platinum salt dust which just needs to go inside an ebf so i have an interface hooked up underneath that we're going to request some of this refined platinum dust from and through some struggles with AE and getting my channels uh, properly situated, shout out to uh, Nomad and Grava in the Discord. Let's start her up. Or not. All she needed is a circuit, I believe. Oh, and you can't put it in there. I always forget that. I don't know why, but... Now we just want to test this and make sure the chlorine goes to where it should, which it is not. I believe the reasoning on that is due to one, this not being on insert as well. But since fluid P2Ps are bidirectional, this also needs to be on in and out. Now hopefully this doesn't jack anything else up, but it looks like our fluid was indeed transported. 
all we should need to do is come in here and enable this to both insert and extract so that we can get the byproducts of our recipe after it completes. So we should get a fair amount of chlorine back from the process over here. We could always use that. We can see this going down. And since it releases platinum metallic powder back into our system, we should start to see this start up. And these as well. Oh, look at that. We are indeed recycling full platinum through tons of struggles. And our guy's still suffering. He's already filled up an entire drawer. Right now we have 106. We'll come back after some time and see just how much platinum we have. I think the time has come to officially tear these down and do our big power swap that I've been planning for quite some weeks now. Freshly installed large combustion engines. We just have a few minor issues on our hands. And now for our EBF setup. Fix our maintenance problems. Connect our fluid pipes. And last but not least, throw in our turbines that we made oh so long ago. Running fine, running fine, and running fine. Wires are connected. I say we test it out. Something did not work. And I can tell you, I already know what it is. We should probably take these off of disable. Add some filters to our extractors to make sure that they only get charcoal. As some of these were full with ashes, we can't have any of that. And on to a new journey. If you look at my hotbar, you might get an idea of where I'm headed. And this is the amount of lag that I'm getting, being 4,000 blocks away. Oh, there it is. And this is exactly what I came in search of. My precious. Ooh. A mana bean? Those could definitely be useful. Aqua mana beans. Ooh, that's a big one. Magic tree. That is exactly what I was hoping I would find. Now we just need the sapling, and we got a sapling. Let's get one more for good luck. I have no idea what I wanted these magic trees for, but I definitely saw them the other day and really wanted it for something. Now I have been working through a little bit of progression. Uh, first and foremost, I really, really need these goggles. Next on the list is some slivers of entropy. And we'll grab some research sheets. Super easy research. Next we'll go for some Aurelia. And now we have access to our primal shroom. And our primal shroom research is complete. Now to have some fun. We wait for it to bubble. And we throw in our ingredient. And four primal shrooms to start us off. Somehow there's leftover herba in there and I don't really get how. Oh, because they changed the recipe, I guess. This has two of the wheat. 
which is exactly what the recipe calls for. So we just need, from now on, one pumpkin and four slivers. Noted. Well, we've got our little primal shroom area on its way. And it looks like we've even got one we can go ahead and harvest for the first time. And just like that, our wand gets charged super easy. We just need a bunch more of these. Now with our V-Shroom farm, or our Primal Shroom farm, up and running, we can finally get the Gold Banded Greatwood Wand. No more loss going to be experienced. And now we'll go for our clusters. That should be all of them. And this will now open up the branch into infusion. The entire point of getting into Thawncraft. Well, it has been much, much time later, but I now have the infusion altar, and I believe we are ready to create our Thaumic Restore. I have all of our items laid out and on the pedestals. We use our Arcane Agabus and check our stability. We have 15 stability booster and there's only eight on the infusion, so we're safe there. Grab a stack of coal. Not sure if we have enough. Also, yes, I know this room is extremely ugly. I just needed somewhere to set up basic thom craft and eventually we'll, we'll customize this and make it a little prettier. So I have two files that I got from a quest reward that I think I'm going to go ahead and dump into a jar on their own. Now hopefully, maybe I should take some of these jars away so that our essential only goes into one jar at a time. I'm so new to this stuff, it's going to take me a while to figure it out. But we'll start with our first aspect, Instrumentum. Pure from long stone rods, which is one stone and a lathe. Well, it's definitely distilling it, but it doesn't appear to be going anywhere. Does it have to reach a certain level before it does? No, I must have jacked something up here. Maybe the purple is its progress in distilling? I hope. Also just read that those can only be five tall. Maybe this is why it recommends to use alimentum. Okay, so there is essentia in the alembic. How do I get it out? Is it not facing the right way? So, as it turns out, I took away most of the jars indeed, because I want to do one jar at a time so I can get these filters set. However, you have to shift right click with your wand on the tubes to make sure things only flow in one direction. Sound familiar? Next up, we'll do our crafting tables, which give Fabrica. Next up will be Potentia and Ignis. And last but not least, we'll do Sliver of Order, which will give us our Ordo. Now, if I'm not mistaking, I should have everything ready to finally make Arthomic Restore. Hopefully these jars are all in enough range. Last item. Finally. Weeks and weeks it has taken to get this item. 
but we now have a Thomic Restore. This should make our life way easier. Now we just need to load some stone rods to get some instrumentum flowing into our jar. Oh boy. I've really got to light this place up. I could have sworn I put 64 in there. I don't know how I only have 48. Yeah, I'm not too sure how that happened. Because these door 64, I thought. Anyways, we'll grab a tube or two. Place our essential jar. I guess maybe it has to connect to the side. Come over here, make a new book. Or plate, that is. I might have just jacked up. Yes, I'm supposed to save the plate. What am I thinking? Only make two books, Apex. Zyphir? What is my name? Got some more books. Well, remember, this is the last one that I can make. And then we'll test the Thomic Restore. Shall we test it? Oh, you need Perdicia, not Instrumentum. Got it. Maybe that's the reason that I didn't get all of my aspects earlier. We'll wait and let it go down a little bit and try this, test this theory out. Now we wait patiently. And the test, does it stop? No, it does not. That might have been it. We might have been full on flux in the furnace. So you have to be connected by a tube. Okay. How do I get it to work? I don't know. I'll have to do some research, but... We've got it made, and guess what that means? Five plus however many this is, IV loot bags are coming our way. Plus some good AE bags, basic. Yeah, we've got some, some work, some goodies to open. Okay, so I figured this thing out. The tooltip is 100% wrong. It does not take Perdicio. It actually takes Instrumentum, like the Thamanomicon says. I have no idea why that is inaccurate. Anyways, there's our eighth book. I had the materials for four more, so we have 12. And we hope for the best, because the last round of these were absolute garbage. Leave it all a surprise. What did we get? Two ender tanks, four ender chests, an emitter, five scenarium batteries, three ender pouches. I think leaving that a surprise was probably the best bet. Now, some tasks for some quality life improvement. Hello, buddy. And uh, now we just get brave, because we don't care about the wither anymore. I'll let him explode and do his thing, but... Oh, this might have been a bad idea. Next time we'll use the crossbow. <laughs> now these quantum stars look relatively easy to make. Just need an HV chemical bath. With a little bit of radon. Now to continue this, hopefully I have enough because I haven't completed the platline automation yet, but we'll see. Let's take it for a spin. Now we just throw in our acidic iridium solution, I think is a liquid. Nope, they just go in as cells. We are able to get just, just enough iridium. I think I got that Original dust from a loot bag or something. And last but not least, our IV emitter. And sensor. 
definitely didn't hate that too much. And our nanoprocessor mainframes have been finished. First two in the book. We're going to take those two and make an advanced circuit assembler right away. Or we're not. I thought that was a sensor. That's my bad. And 10 years later, again, our IV circuit assembler. The qubit wafers and chips. Now, just a little check as I'm looking at all the components I'll need. Fine platinum wire brought me across checking how much platinum we had. And this is just with us running out of PMP. Just about. It's going right now. But it's about to run out. But we have 1,200 and I have a miner on nickel. So down here in our clean room, we should just need to do a little switcheroo. Step up transformer. Just for now. And our output side needs to go to the back. Now we should be able to connect this. No explosions. And we're going to have to turn him back on. Should have left the mallet out. We're finally at 100%. Let's run it. The single step EV circuits are within our reach. Officially. Now, one of our quality of life improvements is going to be this monster repellator. Repellator? I don't know how to say that. We'll put him right here. And one of our last little quality of life updates. This MEIO port. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I never had. We are indeed going to do the storage cell shuffle. What I'm hoping is I can place this here. And then we can take these, no, these, 1Ks, R16, and then we'll drop, oh, I think it already transferred to the system automatically. Well, I guess that's the problem we run into is the types. So we'll save these for now, put them back into our system, and figure out a solution another day. Anyways, I just got done editing a lot of the footage and realized we're pretty close to our time. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed everything we got to today, including these one-step EV circuits. And we'll see you guys again next time for some more Greg Tech New Horizons. This time, next episode, hopefully we have a bunch more ore processing, a little bit more automation, and some Greg Tech++ multi-blocks. See you guys next time.